Like many, my only real exposure to Casa Bonita for years was the South Park episode. I know tons of people who didn't even realize it was a real place, but anyone who grew up in the Denver area knew, especially if they experienced it as kids, that Casa Bonita is magical. I'm gonna be honest, I wasn't even sure I believed that it was all that special, but after spending a single evening there, I get it now. I really get it. But before we dive into my experience at Casa Bonita, let's talk about its more recent history. I expect a lot of you are here because I cover South Park on my other channel, and now Casa Bonita is just deeply tied to the show and its creators. In 2020, Casa Bonita filed for bankruptcy, and who swooped in to save it but Matt Stone and Trey Parker themselves, who had a deep connection to the restaurant from their childhoods. And these two were the exact people to take on this challenge because they, A, were incredibly passionate about the restaurant itself, and B, have an absolutely ludicrous fortune after the last couple of South Park contracts, and that passion is clear based on the amount of time and money they spent restoring Casa Bonita. They didn't want to just come in and build an entirely new experience, they wanted to fix all of the issues with the inner machinations of the restaurant while maintaining the exact experience that they remembered as kids. And as it turned out, that required a lot more money. Restoration is a, be is a better word than renovation, because right. it would cost way less to just rebuild this, right. uh, make a better version of it down the road. It makes me wonder what that number is. It's close to infinity. Man, I have so much respect for this approach. They ended up spending so much more to make sure they did it right. They did not get into this so that the restaurant could just immediately turn a profit or so that they could be these business moguls. They wanted to actually preserve the amazing experience they had as kids for generations to come. There is a ton of integrity in that approach. And in 2023, they finally reopened. And in October, I traveled to Denver with a group of my friends and experienced it for myself. And let me tell you, even just driving up to the restaurant was awe-inspiring. This giant pink castle glowing like a beacon in the night, it was seriously so cool. We were geeking out in the parking lot alone, and walking into the actual restaurant for the first time, we were blown away. You can see it here for yourself. It is truly so much more magical than I ever anticipated. Now, at the moment, this is important to note. It's a bit of a process to get tickets. First, you have to sign up for their mailing list to be eligible, and eventually, you should get an email that allows you to select dates up to two weeks out. But it's not entirely entirely clear what makes you eligible. Me and three of my friends signed up and only one of us ever got a confirmation email allowing us to get tickets. But luckily that was all we needed and we waited until a couple of weeks before our trip to secure those tickets. I know you might be asking, tickets to a restaurant? And I did too, but keep watching and I think it will make a lot more sense. Tickets are priced at $40 per person or $25 for kids, at least for weekends and dinner. If you go for weekday lunch, it's $30 for adults, $20 for kids. We actually opted to pay $80 per person so we could have cliffside dining seats. And if you have the money to spare, it felt very worth it. We had an amazing view. Each ticket gets you not only entry, but one entree, chips and salsa, a soft drink, and your first round of sopapillas. So the ticket price is also for your meal. Alcoholic beverages are extra, and I expect like me, you might want to enjoy a few margaritas with your meal and dining experience. The drinks were good, maybe a little pricey, but I think you kind of expect that going into a place like this. You can also add on extra orders of sopapillas for only one dollar each order, and you better believe that we got an extra order. Those things are delicious. Honestly, Casa Bonita is running like an incredibly well-oiled machine. We got to our seats, our lovely server Jessica was there very quickly to take our order. Shout out to Jessica, she was great. They have seven entree options on their menu, enchiladas, carnitas tacos, chicken mole, beef suadero, chili relleno, ceviche, and taco salad. It's clear that with these limited options, they basically have the kitchen just regularly churning them out to be ready to serve as soon as you order, because our food came out fast. I ordered the chicken mole, my friends got the beef suadero and chile relleno, and the food was very good. Certainly seems a lot better than the horror stories I've heard about the former Casa Bonita food. And this makes a ton of sense, because basically the faster people get their food and finish eating, the faster they can explore the rest of the restaurant, and the more people they can cycle in and out of the dining experience. So the food and drinks come out super fast. If you need your server for any reason, you can just raise this little flag on the table. It's all really well thought out and really convenient. Okay, let's talk more about the restaurant itself because man, I cannot believe how cool this place was. I think what makes it feel most magical is that even though the restaurant isn't massive or anything, the various levels and street front facades make it feel massive. You don't necessarily feel like you're walking down an actual Mexican street or anything, but it feels akin to like Main Street at Disneyland. Honestly, the clips from South Park and even the more detailed version from the Fractured But Whole video game do not even remotely do this place justice. It's actually a little comical just how much cooler it is in person. And the show and the game were actually trying to make Casa Bonita look super cool. It also feels very clear very quickly why there's ticketed admission. It's like the Disneyland of Mexican restaurants. 
restaurant. It really does feel like a little theme park. So while the ticket price might seem high for a meal, you're basically paying for the experience of spending the rest of your evening exploring what Casa Bonita has to offer. Every 20 minutes, they have cliff divers come out, do a little dance, and dive into this beautiful diving pool. We had an amazing view of this from our table, but I think it's worth checking out from above and below. Really great angles both ways. There are also various different bars located around the restaurant, and they allegedly have secret drinks at each one, but we didn't order any additional drinks after our dinner margaritas. Definitely something I'd do if I ever visited again. Frankly, my favorite thing about the entire experience was just walking around and taking in the atmosphere. People are having a great time, there are little sopapilla stands, a tequila cart, live music, there was a guitarist playing up on a balcony, and when you're a little toasted off a couple margs, the vibes are immaculate. I seriously was just having an absolute blast walking around with my friends. The entire restaurant is littered with little activities if you look for them, all kinds of little games and trinkets. There are the infamous gorillas just walking around, and there are also a lot of very specific locations you can visit as well. The one that is really the least Casa Bonita themed is the game room, which is actually a very nice game room. A great variety of games in there, a smart thing to have at a restaurant-y theme park type place that's so kid friendly. We didn't spend much time in there, but it was pretty nice looking. I think if I were a kid, I probably would have hung out in here a lot. Also, there's a joke outhouse where someone is shitting. Hey, this one's occupied. <laughs> There were two events that I actually wasn't allowed to take any video footage of, one being the puppet show and the other being the insanely mysterious Sorsoro show, which I was specifically told not to call a magic show. We only caught a bit of the puppet show, which seemed very fun, but the not magic show was actually really, really great. The insanely mysterious Sorsoro was very funny, a really unique brand of not magic show. He was like a mime and a clown and a magician all in one, funniest luchador I've ever seen. Okay, I'm sure there is one thing you've been waiting for me to talk about. Can I yeah, Black Bart's Cave is a whole thing. Well, it's mostly actually just a linear pathway with some cool props and visuals, but it was very creative. It certainly looks better in person than on camera in the dark, but it was very, very charming, particularly this final bit where you look up at the creeper staring down at you. Good stuff. There is, of course, at least one newly implemented spot for the South Park fanatics. On one of the upper levels, there's this little gazebo overlook with a life-size Cartman statue sitting at his own table and excitedly eating his Casa Bonita entrees. It's pretty cute, and honestly, I'm glad they just did this one thing to represent the show, and something that fits in with the Casa Bonita episode itself. I think it could have been really easy for Matt and Trey to turn Casa Bonita into like a pseudo South Park theme park, but it once again speaks to their integrity that they really wanted to maintain the atmosphere of what Casa Bonita is and was, not turn it into something entirely new built around their own brand. They also have a pretty substantial gift shop with all kinds of merch, t-shirts, hats, even a deluxe magic kit themed around the insanely mysterious Sorsoro. Here's the thing about Sorsoro. He's so mysterious. Insanely mysterious. Weird that they gave him a magic kit since I was told he did not do a magic show, but we'll let it slide. I actually got myself this really cute little Casa Bonita snow globe. I loved it. I was really excited about it until the goddamn TSA agent at Denver International Airport took it away. I will never forgive you, Anton. We pretty much stayed at Casa Bonita until they kicked us out, and on our way out the door, they gave us these magical pearls that had a cute little prize in them. I'm sure that these were primarily meant for very, very small children, but hey, when in Casa Bonita, it's a finger puppet. <laughs> Okay, so let's talk about the overall experience and my recommendations. I think if you're in the Denver area and you have the chance to go to Casa Bonita with a group of friends, you absolutely should. It really is an incredibly unique experience, certainly unlike any dining experience I've ever had. It really does feel like it perfectly splits the difference between a restaurant and a theme park. If you can afford the cliffside seating, it definitely has the best views of the restaurant as a whole, and it seems like you could end up seated pretty far from the action if you go with the normal seating arrangement. But that isn't to say it wouldn't be worth it. It just means you'll probably have a few more things to scope out after you eat dinner. I also recommend trying to book a reservation at Casa Bonita a tiny bit on the earlier side. Our reservation was for 8.30 p.m. and the restaurant closes at 10.30 p.m. We definitely didn't quite squeeze in all they had to offer in our time there. If you can do a 7.30 res, finish your food around 8.15 and spend a couple hours experiencing the restaurant itself, that seems like the sweet spot. If I ever go back, my plan is definitely to book a bit earlier. We were sort of rushing to see all the little nooks and crannies by the end of our visit and 
I'm sure there are smaller things we missed along the way as well. But also, don't book too early because honestly, that drive up to the restaurant at night when it was all lit up, so, so cool. I cannot overstate how amazing it looked. If you're looking for some kind of special South Park experience and we're most excited that Matt and Trey bought the place for South Park related hijinks, that's not what this is. They truly wanted to preserve what Casa Bonita is and what it meant to them as kids and hopefully make that accessible for generations to come. And I respect the hell out of that. So Casa Bonita, would I say trick a friend into living in a bunker for a week, making his family fear that he's died or been kidnapped in order for myself to go there? Maybe. It was really cool. I definitely want to go back very soon, if I can. And honestly, that's about all I've got for you. I hope you found this video entertaining and informational, and if you liked it, please subscribe to this channel. You should expect a much wider variety of videos for this channel than the cartoon one. I really want to spread my wings and get experimental with it. Plus, you'll uh, see my face, so pros and cons. Peace. Johnny! I stay mellow watching Johnny two cellos. He talks cartoons, he's a really cool fellow. He keeps you posted on adult cartoons. If that's what you're into, then grab a spoon and a very big bowl of your favorite cereal. Feels like Saturday morning cartoon material. Johnny two cellos, watch him on YouTube. Now enjoy this groove and bust a move.